Joining us on the phone from Switzerland to discuss is a former NASA administrator and retired astronaut Charles Bolden to talk us through just how rare this is an occurrence and certainly for everyone to survive it. Um, Caroline, this is a it's a pretty rare it's a very rare occurrence. We've only had um, uh, to my knowledge to one other abort of uh, Soyuz spacecraft and that was quite a while ago when uh, one of the cosmonauts with whom I trained, uh, Vladimir Titov, was actually ejected from the launch pad after a fire on the launch pad. But the Soyuz and its launch vehicles have been very reliable spacecraft up until now. Does it set back the voyages into space? Will it make them give food for thought? How does it affect the space station, do you think? That, that's the question. You know, we, we asked, uh, I think when I was talking with someone earlier, I said, where do we go next? It, it is a setback because today, because of restrictions on NASA's ability to work with the Chinese, uh, NASA is relegated to one, one capability to get their astronauts to the International Space Station, and that's on the Soyuz, the Russian spacecraft. Uh, a, a year from now, if all goes well, we'll be back to normal and we'll be able to utilize either the Boeing Starliner or the SpaceX Crew Dragon to launch crews from uh, the Space Coast, from the Cape Canaveral Kennedy Space Center area. But, but that's, um, that's, that's like an eternity away right now because of the failure today. And this, of course, is all tied up with an recent resurgence and focus from the U.S. government into space, the space race. How do you think this has been taken by people such as yourselves who've dedicated their lives towards studying yeah. space and as an astronaut? Yeah. Let me try to correct one thing. I, I, will, I will take issue on you, uh, with you on one thing. Please. There is no resurgence in the interest in space, particularly human space flight. What we're doing right now is a continuation of what has been going on for a number of administrations. And, you know, the decision to move away from shuttle and to rely on Soyuz as an interim measure until the United States had its own capability again uh, was one that I agreed with and was very important. But the, the problem arose when we found out how difficult it is to get things and people ready to go to space. So, you know, we're in a position that we were hoping we would not be in, but, uh, but we'll get out of this because we thought about it very, very long and hard. Charles, how much do you think government funding is and focus is necessary at the moment when we seem to have so many private sector billionaires, for want of a better expression, really focusing on this area as well, even though theirs might be in general to raise money or indeed for space travel mm -hmm. rather than investigation? Well, given the dreams of all the com what I call commercial ideologues, there is one customer today for human spaceflight, and that is, uh, and that's the U.S. government, that's NASA, and our, and our international partners. Uh, there will hopefully become a time when we'll be able to have a viable commercial uh, capability for putting humans into space. Yeah. But uh, realistically speaking, that that day is not now.